Alright guys, I'm bringing this video to you uh, more of a motivational uh, type thing because I have, I've have i had something happen to me and it was a, it's a crazy story. I have had a lot of people ask me about it and the situation that went down with a um, monster 14-point uh, buck that was stolen from me. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain to you what happened and how I was able to get it back after 14 years go by. If you guys are new to the channel, um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, and also subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Um, for the true fans and followers, we're giving away free product uh, to the people that are interacting on the videos, that are sharing the videos, giving the videos a thumbs up, and leaving comments down below. So, when I first started hunting, uh, I was around 13 to 14 years old. Uh, my parents had bought me a uh, Junior 20 gauge shotgun for Christmas uh, the, the first year. I hunted the re remaining of that year, I think it was, uh, or it might have been before Christmas actually, and we hunted the gun season, didn't have any luck. Well the following year, um, where my parents house is located, there was tons of deer out there. Um, we used to look at them all the time and they used to be running around through the yard, I remember as a kid, and they were like monster bucks in that area. Well, that year, we had bought a ladder stand. Well, we set that ladder stand up and we kept seeing this big buck. Well, I knew from the neighbors were the, on the back side of the property, they were hunting this specific buck. And this thing was giant. And as that, at that time as a kid, I didn't really know what this buck was. I didn't know that this deer was huge. To me, it was just a, a buck. I didn't know they considered you know a small buck big buck I didn't know what this buck was considered at the time so we ended up setting this tree stand up and I remember um, hunting it and it was pouring down raining and sure enough this buck started walking right to us and he came right in about 30 yards or so I had no idea we were there it was dark um, it was raining it was probably only had maybe five or ten minutes left of shooting light and this buck come in, I put the gun up, shot it, it ran off to the right hand side of the property and never saw it go down, it was, it was just foggy, it was horrible. Well, we got down out of the tree and came back to the house, we went back and we didn't want to wait a whole a lot of time because um, of the rain and everything, so we wanted to get right on the blood trail. Well, not a single drop of blood. Long story short, we ended up following it over and there was a neighbor had a wood pile on the other side of the property and that deer was on the other side of that wood pile dead walked up on it and I, I was so excited that this is my very first deer and again I didn't realize how big this deer actually was at the time so my dad he was like freaking out well he called his friends over and we ended up getting my four-wheeler dragged back to the property um, he called a few buddies of his they come over they're like freaking out saying, you know, they've hunted 20, 30 years and never saw a deer this big. So, um, got through that night, we gutted it, cleaned it up, we um, put it in the garage, put some ice, stuffed some ice into it. Uh, I think the very next, no, that night actually, back then we had check-in stations to where you actually take the animal to the check-in station and they would fill the paperwork out, your license, and they would check it in. There was people there checking some other deer. They were freaking out because of the deer was so big. So we took it back home the next day. I think I had school, so I went to school, came home, and I wanted to obviously get it mounted. So we took it to a local taxidermist. I'm not gonna say the name of it, but it was a few weeks before Christmas. So we dropped it off, wanted to get a, a, a regular standard shoulder mount. Well, I think it was about a week or maybe a few days before Christmas and the taxidermy shop called my parents house and they spoke to my dad and the look on his face didn't look good he looked upset and I wasn't sure what was going on so he gets off the phone and explains to me that according to the taxidermist somebody broke into the shop and stole my antlers didn't steal anything else like the hide or or nothing like that it was all it was all caked out the um, antlers were cut out of it and everything and somebody broke in and stole it. He tells me this and I like, I think I cried. 
I was like devastated that my first first deer that I was getting mounted is was stolen. Well, back then, being 14 years old, there's not a whole lot that I could personally do. So I'm relying on my parents to figure out this situation and what happened. Well, they go to the, the taxidermy shop. They fill police reports out. He, the taxidermist had a police report. Um, so on and so on. We went from there. We, my mom actually went on a radio show for outdoors we, uh, in Maryland here. I think it's still, the person still does it, but we have a radio show on Saturdays. It's a hunting, outdoor hunting show. It's like a podcast type thing. It's live on, on the radio. She went on there explaining the situation, trying to spread the word, and they did everything they possibly could, and we never found the deer. So years go by. It, in the back of my mind, I always thought that this deer was like, you know, in some rich person's house in Texas or somewhere out of state that I would never find this deer again. So in that time, after this happened, the taxidermist said, we can either throw a bigger set of antlers on your deer and mount it for you, or we can make a replica of, the, of your deer. Well, I wanted a replica because I wanted something more realistic to what I shot. So a few months go by and he calls us up, he said he made a replica of the deer. So we go there, we go to pick it up, and me not hunting for very long, it was the worst thing that I've ever seen. Here is the replica. Now as you can see, it does have the formation type thing here, but it looks nothing like my deer that I shot. It's horrible. The paint job on it is ridiculous. The brown tines are just thin and I, you know, mine, I can't even wrap my hand around the brown tines. It's just horrible. So this was mounted on my deer and um, I wasn't happy. I had it mounted in my room, but I wasn't happy about it. So after we got this back, years go by and thinking that I'm never going to find this deer and it was a horrible feeling and I wasn't sure that I would ever that I would ever get the deer back so I actually honestly I kind of forgot about it I just, it just it, I stopped thinking about it because there was no point in get being upset about it so I think it was pretty much 14 years go by and my current taxidermy Brian Jones if you're watching thank you buddy um, he tells me about this website or something that you can go on, it was like a taxidermy site, and all the taxidermists go onto this site to talk about certain things, and you can post like a forum type setup. So I went on there, gathered all the pictures that I had of this deer from four, from 14 years ago, being 14 years old, um, and I posted in this forum section of my deer being stolen, the whole situation from the taxidermy shop. If anybody sees it, please contact me, and like a created like a little story about it so literally three to four days go by maybe five no more than a week and I get a message on this forum saying hey man I seen your deer in a local gun shop in my area it's definitely yours um, contact me a ASAP so I respond to him immediately in my mind I'm thinking he's joking there's no possible way that he's seen this specific deer in a local gun shop so I said and the kid keep in mind is 14 years old he goes into this gun shop all the time apparently with his father so I'm I said next time you go in there take a picture of it send it to me within hours I get another email from this website and with a picture attached to the email it was my dear inside of this gun shop I said man you've got to be kidding me where are you located um, it ended up being in Carroll County, Maryland, which is about roughly an hour and a half, a little bit less for me. Well, I freaked out. I called the my tax service to see what he would do. I called the DNR. The DNR didn't want anything to do with it. They didn't want to hear the story, nothing. So drove out there, called the police, and luckily the police officer or the sheriff that met me there 
was a hunter. So he understood the situation and the whole thing that went down. So I showed him the pictures. He confirmed. He said, I agree with you. It's your deer. Um, let me go inside, talk to the owner, check it out, see if your deer is inside. So he comes back out about five minutes later and says, your deer is definitely in there. According to the pictures, it looks like yours. He said, let's go in there, stay calm, let me do the talking, and we'll get this figured out. So we go inside the gun shop, and on the wall on the left-hand side, I look over, and my deer is mounted on the wall. We go to the owner. Um, the owner said that he that a tenant of his or something had moved out of one of his houses and left this deer behind so he took it and mounted it in his gun shop for publicity for the shop. I don't believe the story. I don't know what happened. Um, only he knows where this deer, how he got this deer. But the police officer basically told the owner, said, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Well, owner said, here you go, take the deer. He took the easy way so at the time it didn't hit me that 14 years go by that I finally got my deer back so like the very next day I honestly I cried because it's just 14 years go by a 14 year old kid finds it and it's a 14 point buck it's just everything that led up to it and how we found this thing was crazy and what I had to do was, being that the hide on this mount was all screwed up, I had to. I, I gave it to my new taxidermist. He took it apart, um, took the hide off, basically threw the hide away, and then I ended up buying another hide that equaled the same dimensions and size of the current deer. So um, I bought the hide. He remounted it. It looks beautiful, uh, as you guys seen the photos in the, in this video. Um, it's crazy. Um, so he remounted it, and then the following year, I entered it into the Maryland Trophy Deer Contest. They had a, actually, they had a historic section. Um, so I entered it into the historic section. It came in first place, had it officially scored. Um, it scored 172 inches, uh, non-typical. And... I, it's it's still unbelievable. I still think about this every single day, um, and honestly, I don't know if I'll ever kill anything bigger than that. It's been honestly, it's been downhill ever since shooting this buck. Uh, I've never even seen one as big as this deer. Uh, I've seen some big ones, shot some big ones, but nothing compared to this animal. Um, I tell the story not to brag in any sort of way about how big the deer is. It's not the biggest in the world, um, but it's a big deer for Maryland. Um, and being 14 years old, the very first deer that I've ever shot, it's just a crazy story. And I tell this to people because no matter what happens in life or what happens at all in any situation, don't give up. I speak about this all the time. No, don't matter what it is, do not give up there's still hope because honestly 14 years after a few years I gave up and it's just things can happen if you stay positive and talk to the right people talk to as many people as you possibly can about the situation gather your own opinions and proceed from there so after talking to my new taxidermist he tells me about this site and boom 14 years go by a 14 year old kid finds my deer in a local gun shop and I get it, I get the thing back. It's just I tell it for motivation and to never never give up because anything can happen, anything is possible. And to thank the kid, I, I ended up sounding him, I think it was either two or three hundred dollar uh, gift card to um, Bass Pro Shop because he was a hunter, him and his father were a hunter as well. So I sent him a little gift card for that. Um, I kept in touch with him. He would send me some emails and stuff over the years, but I honestly haven't heard from him uh, in, a, in a long time. But this was 14 years go by. Um, it's been probably, I think, six years now that I've, that I've got the deer back. 
so um, it never goes out of my out of my sight. It stays in my house. Um, even when I entered it in the Maryland Trophy Deer Contest, I had to leave the thing there, and I didn't like it. I, the guy that that uh, scored the deer, he was there. I told him to guard it with his life. Um, but yeah, so how this deer got stolen, I have no idea. I don't know if it ever got, if it was stolen, if it was sold. You don't know. Nobody knows. Only the person, the taxidermist, and where how it ended up in his gun shop. Only he, only they know. I'll never know. Um, but the whole reason behind this video is motivation. Uh, stay positive. Don't ever give up. And uh, good things can happen. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to stay positive. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.